Welcome to section 11.3, tangents to a curve. Uh, what we're going to do is once again look at derivatives and what they mean and what we're going to use them for. So we've already talked about how to find a derivative um, and what it kind of sort of means, but let me just kind of go through this real quick. Um, again, identifying that we're looking for the slope of a tangent line, which only goes through one point. So we had to start with the secant line, and what we did was is we made that value of h smaller and smaller and smaller and closer and closer and closer to zero so as it approached zero as we did that and it approached zero it was the limit um, of the secant line and so what we found out was that the derivative was equal to the limit as h approached 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And so what we've been practicing for the last couple days is just being able to find the derivative. And we, we first started doing it by definition, and then we moved into the last couple of days doing it by rules. Um, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this idea and we're going to find the slope of tangent lines. So I want you to find the slope of the tangent line of f of x equals 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. Now, because this is a quadratic and it's a parabola, it depends on where that 0.16 is. You know, if it's up here somewhere, you can tell that, you know, the graph would be, uh, the slope would be very steep. If it's down here, um, it's, it's not as much. It's, you know, kind of closer to zero. And so it just depends on where this point is located as to what the slope is going to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the derivative. So f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. So that's the function. And so to find the derivative, we're going to use the rules of polynomials to be able to do that. So 2 times 2, which is 4x, that's supposed to be a 3. 3x would just be plus 3, and then the derivative of 1 is 0. And so the derivative of the function is 4x plus 3. This represents what we're just going to call the formula for the slope. And so the derivative is the slope of the tangent line, but it depends on what x value you want to use. Well, for us, we're looking for the slope at x equals 1. So we'll plug in 1 into the derivative. So 4 times 1 plus 3 is equal to 7. What does that mean? Well, At the point 1 comma 6, we know the slope is 7. And that's what we've identified. And you can do this once you find this, what we call the, you know, the derivative. Once you find that for that particular function, you can find the slope at any point. I could say, you know, just to kind of show you, you know, not a, a new problem or whatever, but we could say, what's the slope at 2? And that's 4 times 2 plus 3. So that's 8 plus 3 is 11. So the slope is getting a little bit steeper. We could say, what's the slope at 3? 4 times 3 plus 3. At 12 plus 3 is 15. So the slope is once again getting even steeper. So we can continue to do this. We can find the slope of any point on the parabola now, um, now that we know what the derivative is. So once again, the derivative is giving us that formula for slope for any point on the uh, function. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's look at another example. Find the slope of the tangent line, once again at that point. So if you want to pause it real quick and go ahead and, and find the derivative and plug that in so you can find the slope, you can do that. And then we're going to take it a step further and we're going to go ahead and say let's write the equation of the line as well. So 
So there's our function, it's a cubic. We're gonna find the derivative. So that's three x squared minus one. And then we're gonna plug in whatever x value that we wanna find the slope for. And we wanna find it at the point two six, so we're gonna plug in two. And that's three times four is 12, 12 minus one is 11. So at the point two six, we know that the slope is 11. Well, let's say we want to write the equation of the line. Well, we have a point and we have a slope. So this just goes back to some of our previous algebra skills. Given a point and given a slope, write the equation of the line. I'm going to use point slope form. So I'm going to use y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1. If you want to use slope intercept, that's fine as well. So y minus 6 is equal to 11 times x minus 2. Distribute the 11, add the 6. Oops. And then you have the equation of the line that you that we were looking for. So this is the slope. Sorry, this is the equation of the tangent line through the point 2, 6. And that's how you can kind of take it a step further and be able to write the equation of the line. And then really the last thing that I want to look at is kind of just to take it one step further. So this one I want you to write the equation of the line tangent to the function at x equals negative 1. So it seems pretty similar to the one that we just did. So once again, if you want to pause it and go through that process and then check what you did, you can do that. We're going to go ahead and find the derivative. So this is going to be 8x cubed minus 9x squared plus 8x plus 2. So that's that slope formula for the tangent line of any point on that curve. We want to know what it is that x equals negative 1. So we're going to plug it into the derivative. Realize that we're plugging this into the derivative because we're looking for the slope. And so we'll get negative 1 times 8, so that's negative 8. Whoops, that was supposed to be squared. So that would be 1 times negative 9, so it's negative 9 minus 8 plus 2. And that will give us, let's see, negative 16. Negative 25 would be negative 23, it looks like. And so this is, once again, now we don't actually know what point it's at. We only know it's at x equals 1. So at x equals negative 1, we know that the slope is negative 23. But if we're trying to write the equation of the line, we need a point. Well, we know the x value is negative 1. How do you find the y? Well, you plug it into the function. So we need to identify what f of negative 1 is, not into the derivative. Derivative is to help us find the slope. We want to plug f of negative 1 into the original function so that we can identify what the y value is, what that output is. So we would be plugging this in right here. So 2, negative 1 to the 4th, minus 3, negative 1 cubed, plus 4 times negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 1 and if you plug either that into your calculator or go ahead and do it on paper you should get f of negative 1 is equal to 8 so that means that's the output when the input is negative 1 into the function and so now that you have a point so at the point negative 1 comma 8 with a slope of negative 23, 
now you can write the equation of the line y minus 8 is equal to negative 23 times x minus negative 1 which is plus 1 so negative 23 x minus 23 add the 8 can't read my writing minus 23 and so the equation let me rewrite that it was a little sloppy y equals negative 23 x minus 15 and that is the tangent line at the point negative 1 8 and that's what we were looking for right the equation of the line tangent 2 at x equals negative 1 we had to find the 8 and that's what you have and the thing is you can graph the original function and then you can graph the tangent line and kind of see as long as you know it doesn't go through the parabola like that well in this case it's not a parabola but a, the polynomial um, and it looks like it's the tangent line, you, you're probably doing it correctly. So that's really it. Um, well, the next thing we'll do is critical points, but in terms of, once again, you know, we've already kind of done the, the hard part as to, you know, identifying that definition and that idea of what a derivative is. And then we moved on to, okay, what can we do with the derivative? What well, all has to do with that, finding that slope for a particular point. Thank you.